the story of Hagar and Ishmael. And I thought um, it might just be useful for us to remember. Um, I, of course, grew up in Sunday school learning these stories, but we're not all as familiar with some of them. But Abraham and his wife, Sarah, first named Sarai, um, Sarai was unable to have children. And um, God had promised Abraham to have many descendants and to be you know, this, this uh, forefather. And so his wife um, offered Abraham her handmaiden, Hagar, to have children. And Abram lay with Hagar, and Ishmael was born. Later on, Sarai, now named Sarah, renamed by the god, is able to have children, and she has a son, Isaac. And as you may imagine, there's some jealousy of Hagar and Ishmael, and Sarah asks Abraham to send them off into the desert. And God promises Abraham that this is going to be okay, and Abraham follows the advice of Sarah or uh, her wishes and sends um, Hagar and Ishmael off. Ishmael is said to be uh, the forefather of Muhammad giving birth to Islam. So that's the sort of ancestry of Abraham. This piece comes at the point of time that um, Hagar and Ishmael have been banished to the wilderness before they know of their future um, wonders. And the legend is from the book of Genesis. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and, and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Det writes, Desert Interlude, therefore, deals with that short period of time wherein the banished Hagar, clasping the hand of Ishmael, her son, stood wonderingly and despairingly in the desert, lost in dark contemplation. The loaf of bread was almost gone and the water was spent in the bottle. The heat of the wilderness each moment grew more oppressive. What nostalgic thoughts of the home from which she had lately been thrust. What fears for the immediate future, what maternal dread for, her, for the fate of her child filled her breast. What should she do? Was there no hope? Had God, even as Abraham, forsaken her?
The inscription for number three is much shorter. It comes from Samuel. And it came to pass that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. At this time, anyone who wishes to do so is invited to come up and light a candle and uh, express a joy or concern to let the community know about it. Um, please remember that this service is being live streamed, so anything you say will be available right now on the internet and will be archived. So is there anyone who would like to come up and share with us a joy or concern? Hi, um, this is, I'm Claire. My daughter who lives here in Arlington earned a, an international business degree and had a graduation ceremony on Friday at Warwick, University of Warwick in England. In order to witness this, she sent me a link to the live stream and we got up at six in the morning so we could watch it on the television. It was wonderful on the computer.
I'm Nancy Schrock, and I'm lighting a candle for my older son, Andrew, who over these three weeks is hiking the Pacific Coast Trail alone, starting in Bend. This is his third year of doing it. I have joy that he's had the discipline to do this. I have concern that he come back safely. Good morning, my name is Fritzi Nace. Um, I just want to light a candle for our friend Bob Kennerson. Um, I know he's been going through some health transitions and uh, just want him to know we're thinking about him. So I don't know if you're seeing us, Bob, but we're lighting a candle. Good morning, I'm Sheila Rudolph Correa, and I would like to light a candle of joy for my friendship with Zareen, who many of you know. Uh, we've been keeping in touch throughout the pandemic, and she and Alberto are doing well, I'm happy to report, but I'm especially touched because she made a delicious pot of soup for me when she found out that I had hurt my foot. Hey everybody, I'm Liz Lintz, and um, John and I just got back yesterday from a um, trip down to Baltimore where we've been cleaning out my mother's condominium. So last year we moved her into assisted living and it's been going really well. She's much happier and healthier. And, um, but there was a lot of stuff. There was my grandmother's stuff and my grandfather's stuff and my great-grandfather's stuff <laughs> to go through. And we've just finished kind of going through all the personal family things and had a nice visit with my uncle, kind of looking at them and sharing memories, which was really nice. And um, I'm just profoundly grateful to John for all of his support in this whole process. He's been incredible. So that is my, jo uh, my joy. Anyone else? Getting hot wax dripped on your finger when it's over 90 degrees is no joke. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, then I'm going to light uh, two candles. The first one is a candle of personal joy. Uh, my wife, Nancy, as I told some of you, had surgery on Friday uh, on her arm, and it all went well, and she is recovering at home. We were able to break her out of the hospital, and it really was like orchestrating a jailbreak. Um, and she is home, and uh, the prognosis is all good. Recovery uh, in a couple, maybe two, three, four weeks. And I'm very grateful that our older daughter, Katie, has come up from New York to be with us. And our younger daughter, who lives in Acton, is also helping out. So I'm going to light a candle for that. And in the spirit of being a fair parent, our son, who is in Philadelphia, is sending his good wishes. Uh, and now I will light a final candle for all the joys and sorrows that we all have within that have not been spoken today.
episode. Okay, we now come to the part of our service, which is the weekly offering. And as soon as I untangle my glasses, the offering is a spiritual practice, a collective affirmation of our shared values and commitment to the mission of this liberal religious congregation. The different ways you can donate to the Winchester Unitarian Society should be printed in your order of service, or if you are watching this virtually on the screen, please write or type the date of your offering in the memo line or comment field. The morning offering will now be generously given and gratefully received. Those who wish to do so are invited to join in the union, in the unison affirmation in your order of service. We gather not for ourselves alone, but to use our common power to build the beloved community within and beyond these walls. We create and reaffirm this covenant this day to make justice flourish, to practice compassion amidst difference, and to embody transformative love. 
So on to um, some more New Testament um, ideas here. Um, I am the true vine uh, refers to two um, legends from uh, the Gospel of John. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, and I am the vine, ye are the branches. And that's uh, the vine is referring more specifically to Jesus and the branches to the disciples. And this piece is an invocation of, of the Trinity, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in doing that, debt has a three-part fugue for us. So this should make um, some sense that we have the three parts of the divine represented by three different voices. And just a little refresher for those of us who forget our music history that a fugue is a little bit like a round. So if you think about our hymn, Come, Come, Whoever You Are, that we sometimes do with half singing at one point and half singing at another point, or sometimes even more segmentations. A fugue is a little bit like that. We're gonna hear the same melody. And this time he has a little tune with that scripture. I am the true vine, ye are the branches that we're gonna hear in a couple different places in the piano as we take this musical journey. In number five, number six, sorry, Martha complained. This uh, deals with the story in the New Testament with the sisters Martha and Mary. And just for some context, you may have um, remember the story where Lazarus is raised by the dead by Jesus. Lazarus is Martha and Mary's brother. So Jesus has paid Martha and Mary a visit, and Mary is listening to Jesus' teachings, and Martha is doing all the work of um, taking care of everybody. And so um, this is a, the most descriptive story in the set, and the work is described by this little uh, ground bass. In my opinion, it's actually a little too lovely to be a drudgery, but that's the, that's the thing. And there's a melody that goes along with that. At a certain point, um, uh, Martha breaks a glass. And then she um, flips out a little bit. She gets upset. Um, and there's actually a really interesting um, musical device that Det employs here, which is a recitative, which is usually a vocal kind of phenomenon that he sets for the piano. So I'm going to read you a little bit of this recit. You're going to hear Martha first say, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, to come and help me. Bid her, therefore, come and help me. But Jesus reproves her. Martha, Martha, Martha. And you'll hear the music get softer and gentler there. 
You are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. At this point, uh, Det gives us a little celestial amen. And Martha returns to her work. And upon reflection, it is the composer's thought, a change has taken place in her feelings. The music changes from minor to major, indicating that something of light has passed into her soul.
In number seven, other sheep, also referring to the Gospel of John, other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And Det writes that there were other groups beside the chosen people to whom the messianic message should be brought is evidenced by this pronouncement of the master. Who these might be, we do not know, but it's reasonable to suppose that they were outside the pale of the 12 tribes. The melody used for this representation is one of many given the writer several years ago by a former pupil, Mr. Daklama Samango, a native African, and was chosen because it seemed to possess a certain yearning quality suitable for the portrayal of the feelings of those who longed for the light. The whole piece is a large two-part form of which the first section is a set of variations, and you're going to hear variations on that theme. It'll first be pre presented pretty clearly. And then there's a little poco allegro uh, with a coda. Um, this is the sort of most, the meatiest part of the whole set. So um, sort of sit back and await. Oh, Thank you. 
Thank you. We close with number eight, Madrigal Divine, which is um, along the lines of the uh, instrumental recitative. It's an instrumental piano setting of the 23rd Psalm. So to recite that for you, so you have it in your mind. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The ever is quite an expansive sound at the end, and if you can just imagine a little bit If you listen really closely, you can hear those words in your imagination.
Thank you, John, for that wonderful, wonderful service. Would you all please stand, uh, recite with me the words printed in your order of service for extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Today's service is concluded, but our life of service continues. I don't know to what extent we will have refreshments outside or downstairs, depending on the weather. As I stated, we're not going to have a discussion today, and actually this service is so wonderful. Let's just all think about it and contemplate it. And finally, be here next week. Dan Hermes is gonna talk about good and evil.